just a word for you who are sitting out there. Uh, there likely is nothing on fire at Bethel other than those three little pieces of paper. Last night, two people left to investigate. It's amazing what three little pieces of paper. And, and I don't have a good record with fire in this place. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who have been here less than five years, you can talk to some long-timer at Bethel. Uh, there's nothing burning, I don't believe. I'm sure alarms will go off if something happens out there. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We live in a turbulent time. When we hear of missiles leaving the Gaza Strip toward Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, we worry. We worry when we hear of Israeli strikes in the Gaza. Even with a truce, uh, that news has stayed at the top of the agenda for our newscasters and newspapers. If it's possible, that has moved the bloody civil war of Syria to the back burner. In our own country, we can pick up any newspaper and read about the looming fiscal cliff and the intractability of po politicians on both sides of the aisle. But isn't it true that every generation has believed that it lives in a turbulent time? For the very oldest among us here, you can barely remember a depression. Others here will remember living through a world war, maybe fighting in that world war, or fighting in other bloody conflicts involving our country. There are some here who will remember a decade with inf inflation in the double digits every year with home mortgages at 17 and 18 percent. It has always been turbulent. It was no different in Jeremiah's day. Before Jeremiah, they had just gone through a seismic global event. Babylonia had defeated Egypt in battle, forcing Egypt to retreat with tail between legs back down to Egypt, leaving only one superpower, kind of sounds like today, Babylonia. And they were able to do whatever they wanted for 70 years in the Middle East. And they did whatever they wanted, including the destruction of Judah, Jerusalem and the Holy Temple. Jeremiah comes to the scene with a most impossible task. It is his job to preach to the kingdom that they will be destroyed because of their sinfulness. Now, Jeremiah holds out a little hope that the people will hear his words and change their ways, but that hope is obliterated by the people's absolute unwillingness to hear a word of the Lord. Nonetheless, Jeremiah remains faithful to his task. In today's lesson, God tells Jeremiah to write down the words that he has been saying on a scroll. So Jeremiah takes his faithful secretary, his scribe, Baruch, and they get all of the lessons printed down onto a scroll. Then Jeremiah tells Baruch to take this scroll to the king, the wicked king Jehoiakim. In in the slight hope that somehow the people will hear these words of judgment from God. But as you have graphically seen, maybe even smelled by now during the children's word, those words were not well received by the king. The king cut them off bit by bit and threw them into the fire. Seems that neither king nor people wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Two years ago, there was a movie about a holy book. The movie is set in post war America, post war Earth. People are living in a lawless and violent society. We meet a man on a mission named Eli. Eli, which means in Hebrew, my God we come to understand that he has in his possession the only existing copy of the Bible in the entire world, that all the others have been destroyed by war or by people who do not want to hear the word of the Lord. Eli's mission is to get this holy book to the place where it is supposed to be, 
Along the way, he encounters many enemies, not the least of them a man named Carnegie who controls a large mob and who will resort to any level of violence in order to get what he wants. And what he wants is Eli's book. He's not exactly sure what it is, but he wants it because he believes it's valuable. We don't know what he's going to do with the book, but we can't believe that it's going to be anything good, just like Josiah with Jeremiah's scroll. Eventually, Eli succeeds in his mission. He comes to the place where they will take him in and they will guard the holy book. But we come to find out that the book from which Eli has been reading through the course of the movie is blank. The quotes that he has offered from the Bible have not come from the pages of the book. They have come from his mind. At the very end of the movie, Eli prays a prayer and we see him working with a scribe, not unlike Jeremiah's Baruch. Take a look at this scene from the movie. Thank you for giving me the strength and the conviction to complete the task you entrusted to me. straight and true through the many obstacles in my path. And for keeping me resolute when all around seemed lost. Thank you for your protection and for your many signs along the way. Thank you for any good that I may have done. And I'm so sorry about the bad. You don't have to leave, you know. You're very welcome to stay here. You'll be perfectly safe. Thank you. But this is something that I have to do. Where will you go? Home. Thank you for the friend I made. Please watch over her as you've watched over me. Thank you for finally allowing me to rest. I'm so very tired. But I go now to my rest at peace, knowing that I have done right with my time on this earth. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. Did you 
see the mountain of paper on the scribe's table as he dutifully took down all the words dictated to him by Eli. Carnegie in the movie may have been able to destroy a book. Jehoiakim was certainly able to destroy a scroll. But nobody can take from us what is written on our minds and our hearts. Which was God's plan all along. Note that this long first part of our reading today comes from the 36th, the 36th chapter of Jeremiah. After Jehoiakim destroys Jeremiah's scroll, Jeremiah is instructed with Baruch to make a second scroll. But I imagine that that scroll could be burned by the king as well. It is hard for me to conceive of a cataclysmic event or a world war that would somehow destroy every copy of the Bible available. But let's just say it could happen and that we were dependent upon one man for his photographic memory of the Holy Writ that we might have hope in Jesus Christ again. Not to fear. Because God's plan goes deeper. God's plan is to write a new covenant on the hearts of his people. That comes from the last part, the 31st chapter, five full chapters before what we read today of Jehoiakim. That God would do something new and write it on the hearts of his people. This new covenant would be greater than the promises he made to his people as they came out of slavery in Egypt. This new covenant would supersede the law which forms the foundation of the covenant all the way through Jeremiah's day. A covenant which was not working. It was so badly broken and abused by the people. God and Jeremiah could clearly see that. God needed to do something new. I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer shall each teach his neighbor and tell each other, Know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. I will forgive their sin and remember their iniquity no more. That is the covenant under which we live in Jesus Christ. We are grateful for the written word of God, for the Bible, for the learning we have, for the comfort it gives us, even as that book gave comfort to Eli in the movie. But you know, some strange things have happened to that written word over the years and how God's people use that. God has decided that there is a better way. God's plan goes deeper than scroll and ink, goes deeper than a typesetter and pages bound in a book. It certainly goes deeper than computer images pixelated on a screen. God realized that the better parchment is the heart of his people and that the covenant is not a law. The covenant is a person. In fact, it's a baby. And we are coming to that in about four weeks. Some of God's people needed to wait millennia and centuries for this new covenant. I suppose a month isn't too long to wait. Meanwhile, peace to God's people, all who know the Lord from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord. Amen. Please rise and sing.